Hey everybody, this is Kodak here reporting to you live from the set of uh, where I have just filmed the live action elements of the Seven Deadly Sin video number seven. It's the, the last one we have, uh, but uh, while I was working on this, they had the uh, third Bakugan Invitational, which I was not invited to. Again. But anyway, they were there. They uh, revealed some new products, some new concepts, and they also talked about Champions of Astroia a whole lot. I don't know if they should be throwing that many eggs in that basket, but uh, let's have a talk. First of all, what is a Geogun? A Geogun is this new kind of Bakugan they've made that come in shapes other than circles. I know that sounds like it should be shock horror coming, uh, coming from the guy who uh, invented Alto Bronte's disease, except what these Geoguns are is they are based on the old Bakugan traps. Now the Bakugan traps, um, I've talked about them on this channel before, they were Bakugan that were created for the original series of Bakugan. In fact, the, the poster behind me with, with Drago on it, that's a, a poster from the season that introduced the traps, the uh, Bakugan Nuvastroya. And what these traps do is they're actually like little assist characters. You keep one of these traps to the side and during battle, you could plunk a trap that's the same attribute as your Bakugan into play, and it changes the attribute of your Bakugan into play into one of the uh, one of the different ones here. Now, uh, traps were kind of a neat concept. They had some cool designs to them. Like uh, we got Hexstar here, which I, I like to show off. Hexstar is a bit of a a bit of a rare one, but um, they didn't really they weren't really much of a hit product wise because changing your attribute in the middle of battle is not a very effective use of your turn because uh, the thing is with the original Bakugan, you were encouraged to essentially make a monotype deck and then pick the, because all of the support would generally best focus on one of the six attributes and you basically had to pick one. I mean, I made kind of an interesting gimmick Minx Elfin deck that is uh, multi-type, but most decks were just straight up one type because so many cards benefited one type over all of the others, one attribute. So being able to change um, attribute in battle was not so useful. These were later replaced by battle gear, which I honestly think were the best support piece they ever made. These had a, a small boost to B power, not much more than an ability card would give you and would occasionally, if you matched the type or the card color, would give you an additional cool effect. Battle gear was really cool and battle gear was the basis for the Baku Gear, which were uh, one of the two major innovations to come out of uh, Armored Alliances. Armored Alliances, it's the armored part of Armored Alliances. What they are is they are uh, little devices that latch onto your Bakugan and uh, transform into weapons. They're based on the old Battle Gear, although they didn't really have that effect in game. The Baku Gear were actually, you actually didn't need the, the actual toy to play the game. Instead, you just needed the cards was shuffled into your deck and acted like Bakugan, uh, acted like Pokemon tool cards. Uh, they didn't act like Bakugan. They acted like Pokemon tool cards and that you could have one and they gave you a power boost of some kind. Um, they were neat. They were definitely a welcome addition to the game. They added a new dimension of play. The other part of uh, Alliances, the Alliances part were the fusion cards. Now, these were uh, unique Bakugan characters that... Uh, instead of needing an Evo card from your deck to play onto them to power up, would instead uh, you pay the cost and you flip them over into their Evo form. Now, this was, uh, this is, uh, th these are actually pretty neat. I think they were good for the game because even though they tended to be a bit less cost effective than Evo cards, the fact that they were always on the table made them useful. They could not be milled away before, uh, your opponent can, before you get the chance to play them, they can't be milled out of your deck or forced to discard from your hand because they were always there. You could always play them. Geogon are literally the opposite of fusions. What they are is Geogon are like the, uh, like let's use Hexstar as our example here. Geogon, they are little non-round Bakugan that you, uh, you can keep, I think it's one. I don't know if it's more, I know you're allowed to have at least one to the side of your deck. And what happens is the Geogun cards are actually shuffled into your deck like Evo cards. And because they are cards in your deck, your Geogun must match one of the attributes of the Bakugan in your deck because they count as the cards. But um, what happens is if you draw that card, it's uh, it's less like an, a card that always has an Evo at its disposal, which is what a fusion is. A Geogun is more like a pinch hitter. I've heard some people use the idea like tag team partner. No, a Geogun is a pinch hitter. It's something you can only really bring in for 
a brief period. Um, what happens is it essentially takes the place of your Bakugan in battle. You take the Bakugan that you had successfully rolled out onto the field, or it says any time you could re-roll a Bakugan, so perhaps even on a miss you are allowed to roll it. Um, they actually didn't clarify that. I need to get clarification on that. It says any time you could re-roll your Bakugan, so that would be any time um, during the roll phase, but uh, you can re-roll during the battle phase, I believe. It would just end the battle phase if you miss. Um, I don't know if it means you have to land the Bakugan. It says retract your current Bakugan, so I assume you have to land your roll in order to use them. That is based on what I'm reading. You put, you retract it, which is close it back up and put it back. Then you take a Geogon and uh, you drop it from a height of one card length, so about three, three and a half inches. And if it opens and lands on a core, it essentially takes the place of the uh, Bakugan you just had. That makes it a little easier to land. It technically gives you a free reroll, which means you can return a core to the field and place it wherever you want. You can just drop it from straight above. So it's easier to land your shots if you're not the most skilled brawler. Um, it counts as a Bakugan while it is in play, so anything that targets a Bakugan can also target a Geogon. But then at the end of the turn, the Geogon gets closed up, put back into the uh, the side out of play zone, and the Geogon card gets discarded. So they're basically like a one-shot. And honestly, to me, these, from what I've seen, are a bit of a hard sell. I confess I have only seen two cards for the Geogon, and those are from the leaked images of the new Brawler 5-pack, which includes three Bakugan and two Geogon, and those are uh, Darkest Arcleon, which is a uh, 1,000, uh, power 1,000 damage 7 for 2 energy. Um, uh, it has an ability that increases its power by 500 if it picks up a fist, but that caps it out at 1650, and there are already Bakugan that, in their base form, can hit 1650 without any help. Uh, is this one of them? I uh, know this is an 800. Um, the, the one that came in the in the, in the 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 video game is base 1000. It can hit that. Th there are already Bakugan that can hit 1550, 1650 um, for free, so I don't know if that's going to be a good one. The other one is Surduron. A uh, Surtur, like the like the, the Norse god with the giant flaming sword. Um, I think he was, I, I believe he was in Thor Ragnarok as the guy who destroyed uh, destroyed the uh, everything um but he is a power 2000 damage 12 for seven energy um the, the the issue i'm having with these so far is they don't seem very efficient for a bakugan that doesn't stick around like evos and fusion sure they're kind of expensive um but the thing is they stick around uh dragonoid and auxiliator ultra um turns into dragonoid cross auxiliator ultra for eight and it was also power 2000 its damage is down at five but um it stays there permanently and can benefit from the full fury of the fire fist um um Saturn actually doesn't have a uh, doesn't have an ability um but like i said these tend to be this is this is the and this is the the timmy fusion card this is the one that comes in the in the the fancy set that the kids are supposed to like this is uh one of the most basic ones, and for just one point more, it gets to keep that massive 2,000 power. Um, uh, not to mention, since you have to retract your Bakugan, winning a battle with a Geogon does not push you towards the almighty three-shoe beating that is the team attack. And in this game a lot, unless you're running um, Might of Sindius and Mac to uh, do highest damage wins, your typical strategy is going to be whoever pulls off that three-shoe beating first. And in fact, uh, uh, Mighty Mac can pull off the three-shoe beating even more effectively because it's a deck all about high damage. Um, like I said, they're currently a hard sell. I'll have to see if there are some that have like powerful abilities. Apparently, what we're seeing so far are just the versions of the Geogon that come in the box. Apparently, one's coming... In the booster packs and the trading card games, there are additional ones, like there's the diamond ones and the even larger ones. So just one Geogon can have multiple forms. And I suppose that surprise factor, um, the, 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 the way that you kind of have the Geogon in your pocket, might give it some interest. But from what I've seen so far, it just doesn't seem cost effective for enough for something that you have to draw and then goes away after one turn. 
I remember people made fun of like the Neos fusions for the for the same reason. Um, although speaking of booster packs, they were talking in February about how they were going to do this big push for local game store support, but of course, you know, things happened and that uh, that uh, those plans got put on hold, but apparently they've picked up a distributor. I'm so proud of them. This is kind of something that I've been saying like for over a year that they've needed to do is get themselves on a, a TCG distributor and have them to help provide the games, get them to hobby stores, get them to small box and big box stores. You know, like like uh, like I've said, my local dealer is like, you know, I have like XL Brands and MJ Holdings, you have them. They, you know, they send the boxes off to the, to the, the stores which have all the product in them and those get put on the shelf. Um, it's probably one of those. I've heard that the distributor also works in Canada, which is gonna be nice. Um, now that I think about it, I haven't done any Bakugan content since March. And that's because I live in the Northeast, and we are about as starved for Bakugan content here as Canada is. Almost as starved as, as Canada is. Like, it's November. Um, I only started seeing, like, the actual, like, fusion Bakugan in stores, like, a couple of weeks ago. Like, in October. It's the first I've managed to find any of these at all. And it's, it's, it's been kind of nutty. But the fact that they have, uh that they're working to find uh, local game stores, the fact that they're looking for distributors and they're trying to get out those um, those uh, those boxes that I showed off in my Toy Fair video, the uh, the big the big boxes to, um, the, the, the smaller boxes that take up less real estate, you buy three and you've got a draft deck together. I think, I, I hope that will do well. Um, if it were up to me, I'd also make, a, make like a, a version of that for retail later that actually like reveals the Bakugan inside. Um, like, like, it would have been a perfect holiday thing. Um, but yeah, I hope to see that getting forward. I actually have a number of loner decks that I've built that I, uh, that I haven't, uh, had the chance to, uh, try out yet, uh, because of everything going on. But once, you know, if, if people take the lockdown seriously, if we actually get, you know, a proper vaccine that's that's tested and approved and everybody's, you know, safe and we're over all of this. I'm definitely going to take my loner decks to my LGSs to give that a try. Um, although speaking of, you see, I have this nice little crystal box here. It's like the crystal box you get at like, uh, like Walmart or Target that like contains a few cards in it. It is the perfect size to stash a, a full Bakugan deck sleeved with the three Bakugan that kind of nestle in on the side here. And, um, I know people were expressing concerns about these, uh, about having additional components for Bakugan. I know some people were hemming and hawing a bit about Bakugir, although that turned out to be a whole load of nothing. But the fact that Geoguns, you actually have to have it, the, the physical component with you to play the game, has got some people nervous, but I don't think, I don't think anybody's actually scared about it. Like, I've actually told Bakugan, uh, I've told Spin Master this straight up. Um, when people say they're worried about the additional components, they're not worried about little things like this or little things like Geogon. What they're afraid is that Spin Master is going to put out something like this and say, like this big lummox here, and say, this is a game piece. This is something you're going to have to cart around. You can't fit it in your pocket or your backpack. You have to bring this big hulking brute to game day. And the reason people are afraid of that is because it happened in the original series. Uh, Mectanium Surge, we got the Mectagon and the Battle Suits, both of which are essentially gigantic action figures that are doubled as game pieces, overpowered game pieces. Like the Battle Suit here is just, you just slap it down and it's a flat 300 boost. Um, but yeah, this was uh, the case where Bakugan officially jumped the shark is when they were selling us these gigantic action figures. Oh no, I shouldn't say jump the shark because they actually, they actually introduced a shark character in this series. Although, I am a little worried. I, I haven't seen any images for like a new Trox, a new Pegatrix, a new any of those. Um, they said Dragonoid and Nilius are coming back. That's one thing that I was not a fan of in the original Bakugan was how they replaced so many of the characters. Although I haven't really been following the show. I tried watching it for like 26 episodes and it failed to grab me. And after 26 episodes, I think I'm allowed to make up my mind on that. Um, but yeah, Geogun, I'm, like I said, they're interesting. I think I think it's cool that we're getting like some additional components. I actually always thought that they were going to introduce something in the game that like stays off to the side, kind of in reserve. Although I was expecting it to be something that actually had its own like card that stayed with it, and you'd like have to pay an energy cost to like charge it up and get it ready. 
for you to be able to use it. Like you have a card that sits off to the side, you pay the energy cost to charge it, and then you can use it at any time. Like it, you, like you have to make a down payment on the ability, but then you can use that ability any time once, at which point you have to turn it face down and charge it up again. Um, that, uh, that might be kind of cool. Like if they did like a suspend mechanic, like charging up like a super powerful attack. Um, I wouldn't mind that. Like I said, it doesn't bother me as long as the additional components will like fit in one of these. If the components will fit in a carrying case, it's probably not going to be a problem. Like I said, uh, Battle Gear was great. I don't remember anybody saying anything bad about Battle Gear aside from the power creep that, that uh, eventually struck them, but they were a cool concept. Um, Baku Gear, its follow-up was a cool concept. We'll see what Geogon has. If there's a bunch that like when this card enters play, it has this cool effect, like when you play this draw two or something like if there's if there's a bunch that have like a useful effect just for hitting the field, then Geogon will probably be good. Um, it will, like I said, any that, you know, have a cool effect that when they hit the field just by existing that they can do something awesome, then I think that those sorts of things might see a lot of play. But as it stands, the uh, the cost two Geogon that has 1000 power, just 1000 power, not only are there base Bakugan that can match that power easily, but for the same cost and a cost reduction core, I can play a Glimmering Glaive that gives me plus 400, then grabs me another 650 by getting a Magic Shield off of the field for a grand total of 1050 for the same cost, and I keep get to keep the Glaive and its plus 400 power next turn. If Geogon get, like, the same kind of cost-reducing cores that Bakugir get, that's also going to be a vital fact. Like, if your Bakugan picks up one that says, like, G minus 2 to take that cost off so I could play it for less. That would more properly grasp on the one-shot aspect that they're going for. Um, like I said, we're going to need more details right now. We just have the, you know, the word that people have given from the, uh, from the invitational and the few cards that have appeared online. But yeah, that's a, a, a talk about the Bakugan Invitational 2020. And until next time, this is Kodak signing off.